G'day. I'm in Kakadu National Park. I'm about to head across the East Alligator River into Arnhem Land. I've got a big drive ahead of me. Heading all the way north up through Western Arnhem Land. Final destination is the Coburg Peninsula. We're gonna hit the coast. Lots to see up there. Got a bit of a drive, better settle in. Check out this. That's what I call a territory roadblock. Come on mate, out the way. Look at the size of him. Across the East Alligator River, Carhill's Crossing, as you can see, plenty of crocodiles. It's the border of Kakadu National Park and Arnhem Land. We're in Arnhem Land now, and Arnhem Land is 100,000 square kilometres of Aboriginal owned land. Aboriginal people living traditional ceremonial lives. Lots of different language groups scattered all throughout Arnhem Land. Different traditional owners are responsible and own different sections of land. From here on, it's imperative that you have permits. Aboriginal people own the land, you need permission to be here. Luckily we've got permits. We're going to head further north. I've just made it to the entrance of Gurrig Gunak Balu National Park. Gurrig Gunak Balu National Park, it's all Aboriginal owned land. Arakbi people own it. Gurrig was a language spoken on the peninsula. Gunak means land and Balu means water. So it's the Northern Territory's first marine park and the whole land on the peninsula is protected under national parks. It's a unique place. I've got a bit further to drive, so better keep on. After a long, bumpy ride through the bush, it's amazing to hit the coast all of a sudden. Comes out of nowhere. Incredible place to rock up to. It's good to be here. Coburg Peninsula is a pretty special part of the world. There's over 11 species of sharks up here in the ocean. And these little fellas are bull sharks, roaming around the shallows looking for a feed. There's so many apex predators in the marine system up here. The other apex predator we find in huge numbers are these guys, crocodiles. It's never safe to go for a swim. Check this out. Just come across this turtle's track. You can see where she's come out of the water. She's hauled way up. She's come up here to nest. Possibly a green or an olive ridley. She's laid her eggs here. You can see the big hole here where she's dug to fill in her nest. She's made the big journey back to the water down this way and just here. She was taken by a crocodile. You can see where the crocodile's come out of the water, charged up, he's grabbed her here, he's spun around and then headed back into the water. Doesn't look like he's eaten her here. And he's a big boy, his hands are a heck of a lot bigger than mine. You can see the individual scales on his hand and the, the belly scales where he's come up, grabbed her, come back into the water. Unbelievable. Reads like a crime scene. Bad place to be a turtle. Hey buddy, this guy's a northern blue tongue lizard. You can see how he gets his name. Look at that blue tongue. He's sticking that out making himself look threatening. He thinks I'm going to eat him. I'll leave him alone. Now there's no excuse for going hungry up here on the coast. There's plenty of tuck around if you know where to look. This rocky outcrop here looks like an ideal spot to check out for some mud crabs. I'm going to have a look, see if we can't find one. Here we go. This looks ideal. 
perfect hole to find a crab. Just gonna get the spear in. Very gently feel around. Oop, yep. Let's try to coax him out. Oop, here he comes. Oh, got him. How's that? What a ripper. Beautiful mud crab. That fella's gonna taste good on the coals. Here's another delicious piece of bush tucker. These here, cockles or pippies, they're scattered all throughout the mud here. One of my favorite bits of coastal bush tucker. Really nice, cooked up in some butter and garlic. I'm gonna collect a few of these, I might cook them on the coals. Add them with my crab. Now don't get me wrong, I love mud crab, I love pippies, they're all good. But I reckon by far my favourite, coastal bush tucker, has got to be oysters. And fresh oysters, straight off the rocks, you can't beat it. These intertidal reefs here, littered with oysters. Oysters everywhere. I'm going to shuck a few and get a feed. Here we go, amongst all these rocks, they might be a bit hard to spot until you know what you're looking for. But this fella here, and this fella here. They're black lip oysters. Beautiful and sweet. I'll show you how to get into them. Now the tools you use to shuck oysters in the bush may be a little different than the ones you'd use in a restaurant. Got a screwdriver and a hammer. Here's the oyster here. Just going to position the screwdriver on the edge of the oyster. Give a gentle tap. Try a moment. Been a bit difficult this one. Here he comes. Here we go. Ah, beautiful black lip oyster. Scrape him out there. As fresh as you can get. Here he goes. Mmm. Sweet, salty, perfect. You can see why they're called black lip oysters. Big black lip around the edge. Look at the size of this one. Almost as big as my hand. Mm. Better than any flush restaurant. Can't get fresher. Check this out. Looks like I'm not the only one been having a feed. Here's a crocodile. He's come up last night and he's eaten something. It's not a lot left. He's a big boy. Whatever he's eaten, all that's left. Oh, bit of guts, bit of congealed blood. Whatever he's eaten, it was significant. It's all sand and blood here, but not enough left to tell what he's eaten. Everything. He's trying to eat something else out here. It's a wild place. He's come up through here. Big claw marks everywhere. Eating something here, and then going back into the water. He's out there somewhere. As much as there is on the land up here on Coburg Peninsula, there's plenty more out here in the ocean. The marine life's unbelievable. Best way to see it is in one of these, a tinny. Gotta go out and have a look. These are Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, the most common of the four species of dolphins we see here in the marine park. Awesome animals to watch. I could watch them all day. Out here, I'm gonna have a fish. Here's one of these big lures. I'm just going to trawl this behind the boat, see if I can't get a fish to take it. The fishing up here, unbelievable. Let's see if we can get something. I 
Come on. Not a bad fish. Shark! Oh, gotta get him in quick. See a bit of colour. Got him. Beautiful golden trevally. How easy is that? How is that? Beautiful little trevally. It's not a golden trevally like I thought. Maybe a tea leaf or one of the other little trevallies. Good fun. Delicious eating. That's lunch. Pretty tense there for a second with that shark. In a boat this size, a shark that big, bit of a worry. Got him in though. Beautiful fish. Just pulled up at this mangrove creek, Adwanyarn Creek. I'm gonna head out the back of the mangroves. Mangroves aren't very pleasant places to be, full of mosquitoes and sand flies, muddy country, not to mention crocodiles. But there's plenty of tucker back there. I'm gonna collect a bit, and then I'm gonna cook up a feed. By far, one of the most abundant food resources here in the mangroves are these fellas, long bums. They're a snail, cone-shaped shell, really popular with Aboriginal people. Cook them on the coals or boil them up. They're here in numbers I've never seen anywhere else. There are millions of these things scattered through the mud in the mangroves. I've got some friends back in Aboriginal community down the road that would like a few of these, so I might collect a heap and drop them off tomorrow on the way back to town. That should keep him happy for a bit. Beautiful. Ah, here we are. This is what I'm after. Take him away. Pull him out. There we go. Mud mussels. Huge, big, muddy mangrove mussels. These taste pretty good too, and massive source of protein. Another really popular bush tucker with Aboriginal people. I'll see if I can't collect a few of these too. Here's another one here. Sometimes they're easy to find, sometimes they're a little harder. This one's buried right in the mud. Just saw the little tip of him. Give him a wash. Look at the size of them. Huge mussels. Got about four or five now, might get a couple more. That should do me. This one here, I just stepped on him as I was walking past. Right in the mud. Dig all this mud away. There he is. Another huge one. This mud is relentless. It's like quicksand. Every time you try to get out, just get in deeper. Whose idea was this? Well, that's quite the haul. Pretty happy with that. Hopefully my Aboriginal mates back in Gumbalanya, they'll be happy too. All right, one last bit of bush tucker. This has got to be by far the least appealing of the lot. Mangrove worms. 
They're found in these rotting mangroves here. I've just broken this log open. And these are a real delicacy for Aboriginal people. Full of iron. Really, really good for you. An acquired taste, that's for sure. Here goes. Mm. Not unpleasant, but certainly had better. Let's see if we can find some more. Here's one here. These are actually a mollusk, not a worm, but they live and eat the rotting mangroves. Got to pull them out really carefully. There you go. They're actually quite sweet. Oh, there's a heap in here. It's hard to get into. But as a food resource, from an energy point of view, you can't get any better. Oh, big one in here. Broke him off. That's all that's left. Down the hatch. Aboriginal people are very good at getting these out without breaking them. I seem to struggle. You can see all these channels in here. <coughs> Excuse me. That's where they've eaten out the mangrove wood. And that's where they live if you can break open into that. Here's one in here. Get him out. Oh, there you go. Look at that one. A bit gritty. First time I tried these, couldn't stand them. But after a while of trying and trying, you get a bit of a taste for them. Certainly for Aboriginal people, this is as good as it gets. Coastal people have survived on this food for a really long time. Another bit. This is just full of them. Here we go. Break this open. One more. Oh, hit the jackpot here. Look at these. Big, juicy worm. Gotta pull them out really carefully. I'm already breaking him. That's all I got left. Surprisingly sweet. A little bit like an oyster, actually. But as I said, definitely an acquired taste. I'm going to have a few more. It's good to get out of those mangroves just in time, too. You don't want to be in there after sunset. That's when the insects get really bad. I'm going to go back to camp and have a wash, cook up this tucker. I reckon the best thing about my job 
is that every time I'm heading back into town, I turn straight around and get back out bush. I'm very lucky to have this lifestyle, where my job allows me to explore these rugged remote parts of Northern Australia and share that with guests from around the world. The idea with these videos is to share my passion and enthusiasm for the Northern Territory. Try to hopefully inspire some of you guys to get up here yourselves and check it out. If you've never been to this part of the world, if you've never been to the Northern Territory, do yourselves a favour, put it on your list. There's nowhere else like it. Hopefully I'll see you up here one day. Catch you next time.